So we welcome you to the Best of Missouri Hands Professional Development Workshop for October 2023. And we are honored and I'm just delighted to have our guest speaker today is Catherine Mahoney. She is a longtime Best of Missouri Hands um, artist. And I met Catherine when I was first starting out back in like 2010 or 11. And I was at one of my first... I'd say real art shows because I started out at the farmer's markets and stuff, but she had the most professional setup of all the artists there. It was just very eye-catching. The, you know, the pro panel walls and her display was just gorgeous. And she had this big banner hanging out front and she still displays that banner that says, um, you know, best of Missouri hands, uh, juried artist. And I was just so enthralled with this. I mean, I, I didn't come from an art world, you know, so to see this presentation just really caught my eye. And so I started a chat with uh, Catherine and she was uh, so gracious to me and stuff and, uh, you know, just kind of explained things and introduced me to the Best Missouri Hands. So it's because of you, Catherine, um, that I am a juried Best Missouri Hands artist myself and that um, I have really grown to love the the organization and our members. Um, you guys are all like family to me and stuff. So we are delighted to have you here today. I am going to do just a little uh, intro about Catherine and we're going to let her take things away. So uh, Catherine Mahoney is an American Impressionist plein air artist who has recently returned traveling to plein air events throughout the country, including Texas, the Southwest, Upper State New York, Colorado, Door County, or locally, you can find her in Augusta, Fulton, Steelville, and Rocheport, all places that she uh, has painted at. She has a BS in art education from Truman University, Kirksville, Missouri. She has taught for eight years in public and private schools from 1988 to 2018. She conducted Young at Art summer art camps in Harmon, Missouri. During those years, she's participated in the Missouri Artist Visiting Program, which is part of the Best Missouri Hands program. Catherine has uh, graciously uh, given her skills and talents to that program, which brought to you professionally to various Missouri elementary, junior, and senior high students. Uh, Catherine has won over 100 awards in many international, national, and regional juried shows, including several Best of Show. Her art is held in a number of private and corporate co collections in the United States, Europe, and Africa. She has acquired signature status in the Watercolor Honor Society, Missouri Watercolor Society, Texas Watercolor Society, and the Best of Missouri Hands. Yay! <laughs> Catherine has had numerous solo shows, including her, her illustrations found in the children's book, If Only I Could Bark, which was held at the Margaret Harwell Art Museum in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. And I have all three of Catherine's books, uh, and they're wonderful. Oh, so to contact Catherine afterwards or to visit her galleries, um, she also has a home gallery at uh, 1058 Stonehill Highway um, in Harmon, Missouri. I'm going to put all that information in the chat and it will be on the YouTube channel and stuff so you guys can reach out to her. Uh, but her, her website is colorfulbrushes.homestead.com. And I, again, I will put that in the chat and she is on Facebook. So Catherine, I mean, you have, you have done it you you have succeeded as an artist you have made a career of it and welcome and thank you and i'm going to let you take it away well i am just de delighted to be here today with the best of missouri hands which is um an organization that just resides in my heart um i probably am one of the first uh, fine artists that was accepted into this organization because its history was um better craftsmen that were um part of the missouri arts scene that were um organizing this uh, best of missouri hands and a dear friend of mine alice calhoun uh who does copper garden art here in herman missouri and we're just like sisters like this Anyway, um, she uh, told me about the Best of Missouri Hands and that she encouraged me to apply. And that was way back there before. I mean, some of you girls may remember slides, but this is what we had to have, slides. 
and um, a presentation uh, was given and a jury group of members uh, who were all craftsmen had to deal with this funny looking art, you know, because it was uh, fine arts instead. So now I'm happy to report we have a broad band of artists sons and artists in heart <laughs> all together in this organization in our proud state of Missouri. And I'm just excited as can be to talk to all of you today. But um, I would like to start with something that is kind of true to our history here in uh, Herman, Missouri, as far as artists go. Um, when I moved here in 1975, there was an organization uh, or two that was of artists that one was mainly um, dealing with buildings and reconstructing and revitalizing buildings. And another one was to actually go out and paint outside. <clears throat> and I was a new young mother of a one-year-old baby at the time. And I had one excuse after another for not going out, but they just would not leave me alone and would come and bang on my door when they were going out and say, come and join us. So I finally did join them. And we then, uh, along with Alice and another dear friend of mine, Alice, uh, another Alice, um, formed this organization called Best in Missouri, uh, excuse me, Artists of Wine Country, get my organizations right. And um, we then established shows and we had um, two uh, biannual yearly sh uh, shows of our artwork that we created. And we would meet together and, and lift up and encourage each other quite a lot. They met here a lot because I had a baby at the time and she was running around and just enjoyed everything. I hope she can remember it. <laughs> but anyway, so Alice Calhoun was part of this group and she invited me then to expand out, not just locally, but to go statewide. And so that was my first uh, understanding of that. Well, in these two shows that we had biannually, we had a little tiny black and white handout that was just on typing paper and mimeographed for those of you who remember mimeographs, <laughs> purple hands, you know, but anyway, um, we had a quote that was on the front of it. And I'd like to say that to you now, or um, because I have two or three quotes that are meaningful to me, but this one is especially, and it's by Sir uh, St. Francis of Assisi. If you walk or work with your hands, you're a laborer. If you work with your hands and mind, you're a craftsman. If you work with your hands and your mind and your heart, you're an artist. And another one that's by Andrew Wyeth, and he said, I believe one's art goes as far and as deep as one's love goes Again, it's talking about the heart, isn't it? I believe these sayings and they join the story within my creations because I only paint it if it speaks to my heart and moves my soul. <laughs> and today I hope to share some of the stories about these creations over the years. Um, Monet said something that I thought was really um, interesting. I just found this the other day. I am following nature without being able to grasp her. I perhaps owe having become a painter to flowers. Monet said that, and I think it's so true. If you've ever seen uh, images of his gardens or maybe been fortunate enough to walk there, it's uh, really tremendous. He loved his gardens. And I relate, I have an incredibly broad brush of being fortunate enough to travel throughout the world and to assemble a heartfelt collection of art created in those adventures and by my second love, which is teaching others. I think it's definitely your legacy and there's nothing quite as exciting as to see a young or uh, any age mind open up to producing their own art and telling their own feelings and how they think about things. And there is nothing any um, more common about it than raising your elbow and feeding your face. I mean, it's that inborn in each one of us, we have our own innate uh, mind and soul and ability to produce it. And that's why everyone loves so much art because there's not anything that is the same unless you're just a copyist, but you know, we're not talking about that today, are we? <laughs> 
So I just have enjoyed over the years, as Kim spoke about my young at art classes and also teaching in elementary and uh, high school and middle school in both private and public schools. And during all of the years since I've moved, well, even before that, um, I started teaching private lessons and have enjoyed taking those students outside and even taking my friends um, in the car with me to go to uh, various um, activities and um, painting in unknown places. <laughs> so I think she's got up here some of my um, um, pictures that are uh, uh, over the years that are uh, produced and what I have done, but we're not ready for that really yet. Um, I'm wondering, Kim, do you have the um, picture of the courthouse? If yes, you've got sir. those two, um, maybe you could put them up. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, and so while she's getting those up, it takes just a minute. I would just like to say that uh, recently I was at the Rochport Plan Air event and I had two developing artists there who came to me and said that they were um, just inspired by my art. And I thought to myself, well, that is making my heart, art heart sing for sure. And through all of this process that I'm getting ready to show you, I've seen a tremendous potential in young artists. And I've also seen how maturity continues to add richness to any artist or of any age body of work. And so in these things that you're going to see, I'm excited to see where my own advancing maturity will take me. And my goal is to express what I feel, to think about what I see in the world. So what you see up here is taken from uh, 1998, the Gasconade County Courthouse commissioners uh, decided to ask area artists to create a 16 panel historical mural of the history of Gascony County. And artists were asked to submit a thumbnail uh, plan of their ideas, and if selected to produce one side of a second floor surround ceiling installed mural or paint two smaller entryway paintings to be hung at the front door. So there were three artists who were selected to create four panels each. What you see here is the four complete panels of mine, and it's 20 feet long and five feet tall. I stand 5'4", so you can see that that was quite an adventure for me. It certainly was the largest piece of artwork that I've ever produced. But we were to uh, tell the history and the forming of Gascony County in the state of Missouri. And Gascony County was actually formed two years before state uh, Missouri became a state. <laughs> so that was kind of interesting, I thought. The two other artists that had equal size um, in their mural was Alice Bureau, uh, Bauer and Jane Clay. And the two smaller entryway pieces was Linda Heck, a former art teacher here in Herman, and Al Miller, who is now deceased. We got a, a mini grant from the Missouri Arts Council and um, I started painting it. Do you have the one, um, Kim, of me standing beside it painting? Let me see. Or not. Okay. I will get you there, Catherine. That's all right, that's all right. Um, I, it's not important. I just thought it would be interesting for folks to see <laughs> how tall it was compared to me <laughs> when I was painting it. I'm not sure how many um, fine artists we have looking and uh, joining us today. There you go. See, that is um, nearly the top of the mural that I was painting. And I had it down on four uh, easels, four large easels down on the floor so I could paint it. And then we hired a, a wallpaper hanger, as a matter of fact, here in Herman, who um, put these murals up for us and hung them. And he did such a marvelous job, but it involved him getting up on scaffolding. Well, mine were the four pieces that were going to be hung up first, and he didn't realize the canvas was going to shrink. <laughs> so mine separated where that line is that you see right there there was a line in the middle of my 20 foot long painting, uh, 
three of them. And I had to climb up the scaffolding and get up there and paint in between it on the wall directly to fill in the spaces. And don't think I wasn't just terrified. It was. Um, I My husband went up behind me on the scaffolding and helped me get back down by climbing up there and helping me get back down too. I don't like heights. And it was just um, a tremendous memory. But I'm so glad that it's there because I think it's important for the uh, generations to come to see the history of Herman. And um, Kim, if you have the uh, Herman pastoral, that's the next painting that I'm going to talk about, a little bit of my history. Just two or three paintings that I've done in the past that are kind of outstanding. I'll get you there. Just give me a second. Uh -uh. Okay, that's just fine. Um, while you're uh, getting there, um, one of the things that I want to see after that will be the um, um, first image that you had up about uh, talking at the visitors, uh, visiting artists. Okay, so which one did you want first? The Herman Pastoral. Um, which is that one? I'm not sure. It's sheep. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'll get this. That's okay. Is that showing up? Oh, it's no, loading. not yet. Okay, it's loading. Yeah, it's loading. Mm -hmm. I live there out. There we go. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's all right. And in it, in it, it says below it, my break in painting in the national scene. And I think it for sure was. Um, this was a full size sheet watercolor paper. And um, it was probably and still is probably my most award winning painting. It was done in 2004. And um, because of this painting, I broke into the um, Missouri State Fair Top 50 professional show. Uh, they have one every year. And it was a uh, goal of mine when I was younger as a uh, young person and going through and seeing those artists, I wanted to be hanging there someday. So that was a goal that was achieved. But because that I was invited back, um, I had also won another uh, time in a watercolor division there. And in 2007, I was invited to be the artist of invitation. And in 2006, I was invited to be the artist in residence, which I meant I actually stayed at the fair in the fair fine arts building dark at night for uh, a complete week. And it was really quite an exciting time to visit with and meet all of the folks that came to see that fair exhibit that year. Uh, then uh, one of the other winnings I won was through the Missouri Watercolor Society, and I won the Winston Churchill Painting Award in 2009. In the Texas Watercolor Society, this painting won Award of Merit and joined the traveling exhibit. And one of the first ones that Billy O picked it for winning was the Arts Rolla ex ex Exhibition in uh, the University of Missouri at Rolla. And so you see the building here is actually south of Herman, the two buildings, but the sheep themselves come from a completely different source. I brought together all of my memories of being raised on the farm with my dad raising sheep and with a uh, sheep that I happened to see in New Mexico, which uh, belonged to our um, um, residents there. And I just enjoy, uh, bottle feeding little lambs when I was little. I don't know if anyone else had that experience or not, but their whole hind end just wiggles when they get their bottle and they were little orphan lambs and they it's just so easy to love them. And also seeing shears come and shearing the sheep, the wool and what that would feel like and look like. It, I knew what it was to look like when I painted this. And so I fell back on one of my early college professor's belief that you should only paint what you really know and you should not paint anything else. 
I have attempted to paint other things that I don't know as well as these sheep, but I certainly think that it comes across my love of all of those times of feeding those little baby lambs. Okay, so now, Kim, do you have the first one um, that you showed of me? I was in St. Louis. Well, there, that one will work too. The one you just had up was fine. Well, there you go. Yeah. So um, this is showing me in uh, the time when I was actually in the production of making uh, my third book. There's um, two books laying on that table, the production of them. I wore all kinds of different hats when I was um, painting. And then I sat on the computer and made the layouts for the pages and added the text uh, that the author wrote and then um, worked with the printers to get my watercolors um, to be the colors and values that I wanted, the tints and shades that I wanted. And um, I can tell you, I learned so very much that um, it was just a privilege <clears throat> to be in the best of Missouri hands because I wouldn't have been invited to these public schools to talk about this. Our goal there was to um, inspire upcoming artists to believe that they could make a living in their life using their own art skills. And I, um, as I stated earlier, I love to teach. So this was just an incredible time for me. And you can also see this is pre-COVID time. I think that was probably maybe in about the year 2015, 2014, something like that. My hair is still colored. <laughs> And not gray, like it got in COVID. And um, well, that's just a joke. But anyway, it's a younger me. I really did enjoy it. You can see, too, the technology of the time. See the CDs laying there. My um, computer skills and uh, grew because I learned how to uh, scan my artwork and put them on those CDs and divide the artwork in half so it was laying in the uh, gutter correctly in the middle of your book and just so many things. <clears throat> so I actually painted three books for two authors here in Herman and it uh, lasted from 2003 when I began until 2014 when it was over. There's one um, Yes, there we go. You can see one image with the words that were on the first book. This is called Daisy and Digger, and it's written by Kathy Meyer, and it's no longer in um, available. It's sold out completely. It's out of print. But her second book, What Makes Aussie Special, is still available. And the third book is called If Only I Could Bark, and that's the image that you see right here. Yes, yeah, it's that, that one, If Only I Could Bark. And it's written by Debbie Weingarth. So what all together I paint, and this is Aussie. So this is back with Kathy uh, Meyer's book. These are all my favorite three images out of the books. But I did paint 70 quarter sheet sized watercolors for this book over 11 years. Wow. Five years for each book, even though the second and third book overlapped. And it took me uh, two years of solid painting for each book. All the rest of the time took in getting it in the computer and lining everything up correctly and making sure it would publish correctly. And then going and visiting the printers for each one. So I wore many hats, that's for sure. <laughs> Illustrator and uh, page layout designer and publisher. <laughs> so I believe all of the most was um, honored when 40 of these works were selected to be in um, a one woman show in Poplar Bluff, Missouri at the Margaret Harwell Art Museum. That was very much a highlight in my life. And so um, I guess we would be moving on then to uh, why we're here today. And that is to be able to see um, the works that I've produced in my travels for the last two years. I've uh, gone to, um, let's see if I can do, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's do that one. I, I don't believe I did talk about that. Which one, Catherine? Well, we can do that one later on if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Where would you, what, what would you like for me to bring up? I can bring anything up for you. You want some of your plein air? Well, how about, 
well, how about that one's fine. Yes, that'll be just fine. So um, over the last 60 years, I have been actively creating and I've been uh, both painted and teaching my students, as I mentioned before. And my method of depicting beauty and the essence of what you see around them is kind of like Monet's flower. It's with expressive composition, very unique texture that you often uh, achieve with your uh, palette knives and color and dramatic light and shadow. <clears throat> I first learned all of this through my own instructors. And then of course, through the years, I've rolled that all over onto my students. And I've loved every minute of it, of the process uh, uh, from beginning to the end and especially watching the awakening of their minds and the stimulating their love for the visual arts. And teaching has always been my love song and legacy. And as my maturity developed, it came down to starting with an artistic vision or the truth as you feel it in front of the subject, combined with whatever degree of dedicated work that you have achieved up to that point, you see um, uh, it's just really remarkable um, what you can achieve. So I guess we'll go on with that. The technical ability, um, uh, soon I will. Um, uh, yes, there is where my uh, painting, well, it's another person's painting in, in the front, but that is the lupins that I painted actually. Yeah. So Kim, if you would like to go ahead to Cane Hill, uh, that'll be just fine. Can you remind me you what- still have that is? available? What is Cane Hill? Uh, Cane Hill is a cloud, that's the orange clouds and green painting from um, Arkansas. Is this it? No, yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, so she had that up a minute ago, and this is uh, painted from 2016. This image looks like it's uh, kind of blurred, but hopefully it comes across well. It's um, probably my opening into the in plein air scene. Um, it's an award-winning painting um, showing the culmination of 50 years of my directly painting in the landscape first with watercolors and now with oils. When I painted that mural, I think that uh, awoke my desire to paint with oils again. And even though this painting was mostly done with brushes, I have been known to paint with heavy impasto oils and applied with palette knives. And earlier in my worldwide travels, Kim mentioned some of these places, I painted watercolors in places like Ireland and Scotland, Paris, Amsterdam, Portugal, and Italy. And on this painting of the location of the first college that was built in Arkansas, I was awarded first place overall by the Heart of America Artists Association in Crystal Bridges, actually. So that was just a, a wonderful night here that tells the information about it <clears throat> uh, presented at Crystal B Bridges, the um, ninth instead of the ninth it was september the 6th in 2016 and this painting was also accepted in a statewide comm commemorating um history of the arkansas bicentennial traveling exhibit and it was curated also by crystal bridges there were 80 other pieces of artists by um nine from nine states so it was a broad territory of uh, Oklahoma and Arkansas at that time in the territory. And it was established um, south of a point on the Mississippi River. And of course, that is now two separate states. But at that time, it was just called the Arkansas Territory. So um, we can move on to my images if you want to. Kim, we'll see if I can handle this. I'll get my share screen up. Can you see it? <laughs> Not yet. Okay, so it's got to take a little bit of time. Yeah. Okay. okay. Try again. It didn't work? Nope, not yet. Okay, I'll hit share screen. Okay. Okay, share. 
There it's coming up. There. All right. This is a new technology for me. <laughs> You're doing good. So um, what you see here, <laughs> what you see here is my um, beautiful portrait, I think, that was taken by a young lady who was doing ph photography at this event. And she was kind enough to forward this to me so that I could have it. I think it's probably the um, most apropos uh, image I have of myself. Anyway, so when you are submerged in the experience, it invites you to be intimate with your subject. And it's an opportunity to discover your own feelings and ideas in the experience. It also invites you to become intimate with bugs, dust, grass, even tiny pencil thin green snakes, mm -hmm. like the tiny, beautiful colored luminous green grass snake I had crawling around my feet and in my space in Shalom Springs, Arkansas. <laughs> And um, you can also find fingerprints in my paintings or on my frames as uh, when I'm preparing wet canvases to uh, exhibit in the end of the day show or at the end of the event show. Or like I explained before, when my watercolor fell off the easel by the wind in the Sequoia National Park outside of Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> So I have, um, what you see here is of me at uh, what's called um, Fall Color Week. And it was from 2022. Fall Color Week is just about painting all day, every day in the brilliant, rich colors of fall. It's an inspirational retreat for artists to connect with new friends and to refine their painting skills through interaction and learning from others. And there's no better way, really. Watching someone else paint's always very thrilling to me. So I attended my first fall color uh, week last year, which was held in Acadia National Park in Maine. And that was a goal checked off of my list to just get there. It was just beautiful. And I've just gotten back home from the 2023 fall color week, plein air painting. It is a publisher's invitational retreat. It's held in October for one solid week. And it's um, a dedicated week of incredible uh, scenery. And it's a peak week of fall colors. You can think about mountain ranges and waterfalls and distant mountaintops, leaf covered trails and magical farm scenes, all of which I'm going to show you today, except for the waterfalls. I um, have a degenerated disc problem in my back, so no longer do I stand. I sit to paint, and I cannot uh, traverse to get down to the bottom of waterfalls to paint them anymore, but there were younger people than me that were happy to do it. And while we were there, we artists may uh, get up early to catch a glowing sunrise, and if you really get into the rhythm of painting, you probably paint two to three paintings a day. You stay up late, you talk, you paint, you laugh, you make music or you sing together. And we have, oh, so much fun. And it's all in the norm. So this is me at Meacham Lake, New York. And um, this year's um, Fall Color Week was actually held at Saranac Village. I have a painting from there. But last year's Fall Color Week was held in Acadia, as I mentioned, and I um, joined it after a four years absence from painting or creating any at all, because my husband had taken a rapid decline in health. And so I took off my black hat and put on a white hat called a nurse's cap. And I'm happy to report with these two uh, past years, he has accompanied me on the trips. He is relearning how to do photography. And it's just, <laughs> and this one was a highlight because he actually drew two pencil drawings. He's never drawn ever in his life before. So there's a whole new side of him that's coming out. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> so here's some of my fun artist friends. And we, um, I'm painting 
back behind this uh, road, my husband took this uh, picture last year, and you can just see what kind of fun we have. There's a lot of joy that is seen right here. And then this was in Acadia in Maine. And this one you just saw that um, Kim had up. This is called Norman Ridge Road Lupins. And it was painted in June. And it was also in the Adirondacks, but it was called an event called Publishers Invitational Painters Retreat. And it was held in the springtime. So you can just see the two different times of year, um, how different the paintings will be that I'll show you in just a minute. So here, Mike turned around and took a picture of me. Like I said, I had my back to all of the artists. And what I was painting was the foliage and the ferns that were in front of me. I said to myself, well, this is supposed to be fall color week, so I want fall colors, right? And uh, the ferns were just delightful, and they, they were just everywhere. And when I was talking about uh, Monet's flowers, well, it is in my heart. So here is the painting with what I saw behind it and my interpretation of it. <laughs> but you can actually see the texture um, of this painting, I think. And um, you can see the uh, view that I took it from and the um, art artistic license that I incorporated. <laughs> and while wearing this black hat that you saw me in, I always try to build up the texture <clears throat> and uniqueness of a place excuse me, the color of the seasons speak to me, the relationship of light patterns and the values on shapes. And as a contemporary American impressionist, multimedia, plein air artist, I am entranced with dramatic skies and dynamic landscapes. So here's a close up and if you can see the shadows that are created by the thick paint there and applying them with my palette knife. This is a complete palette knife painting. That's nice. Thank you. So you remember I said we were in Maine and we artists were all at a, a bay called Har uh, Birch Harbor. And we were standing over here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Can you? We were standing across uh, this bay and looking toward where I'm sitting right now, painting this. And there is a, a lighthouse right back here that is actually burned. The roof is burned. And I painted it just as I saw it. Um, most of this, Above the waterline is painted with brushes. The bottom is painted with um, palette knife. Nice. And this incorporates a technique uh, that I often use to check my values and to check if everything is working like it should be. If it reads well upside down, it's going to read as well right side up. So I check the var various things like helping to correct values, checking my rhythm, proportion, balance, and variety. And those are all principles of a well-designed composition. And this is right side up again, and maybe you can see the White House just a little bit easier in that one. And it's showing the uh, finished painting on the easel. I always try to get far, far away from my subject matter <clears throat> so that um, <clears throat> you can see the broad shapes that they're simplified and without detail. So <clears throat> earlier in that week, many of us chose to paint in what is called the Blueberry Barrens, which you see in this slide. It was just an entranced field to me. It was had it had a vast variety of tones of reds and purples and magentas and greens and lime greens and apple greens and all kinds of greens that you could think of. And plus this road 
just served to pull your eye back into the mountain that was at the back. And I just thought it was awesome. When I got there, I just went, ah, <laughs> kind of like when sometimes when the sun comes up in the morning and you see an ah sunrise and you just have to get out and paint it. Well, that brought this out in me. That's for sure. This is the uh, beginning. You can see the under drawing that I did with my brush, uh, a little bit of the values that I incorporated um, by painting a wash of transparent red oxide on it in certain places. And my very beginning applying the uh, painting of the mountains. Now, I'd just like to point out right here, the difference in the temperature and the variety of blues that you just see in that. Nature is not going to be the same. It is filled up with variety. There's no person that looks alike and there's no mountain that looks alike either. It is just wonderful. So the next one that I show here is the finished uh, painting. Again, done with palette knife. And you can see here where I actually took the palette knife around and scraped off paint to give the indication of the closer grasses to you which are right down there that you can see. And also, if you'll notice the road, remember it was all, almost all of the same value. I chose to make lower spots and higher spots in the values of darker to lighter tones to make it undulate across that field. It was a flat field, but I, I chose to create more of a rhythm, like a musical composition. I guess. This is a painting that was done at Saranac Lake. And a minute ago, I said this year's fall uh, color week 23 was held where I painted this uh, last year. And little did I know that I would be back living there and enjoying it so much as what I did this year. It's at Saranac Lake in New York. And it's called All In. It has all kinds of different kayaks on its uh, form holder here. And in front of the trees that were um, overlapping it and the grasses that were overlapping it, I just loved it. I thought it had a great story. Now, Kim, I think this is probably your favorite painting of the whole day because <laughs> I, I was, you I love was, kayaking. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, do you have uh, prints of that available? I actually do not do prints anymore. I only have originals. And uh, one of the reasons why is because my printer that I absolutely loved has uh, retired. And so I decided if he was old enough to retire, I was going to quit printing. But I do understand, um, you know, the um, prints are wonderful because if they're done well with high quality inks and on good rag watercolor paper, they are fabulous, or maybe even on canvas. You can print on canvas too. This is an oil, so it should be printed on canvas. Um, but I do understand because it allows um, a broad scope of people to have an image of yours. And I have enjoyed them over the years very much. Well, is the original still available? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will talk, okay? I'm... <laughs> That sounds marvelous. You know, I go back. I'm going to step back here to what we were uh, looking at. Um, I had a thought about this, but now I've, I've forgotten it. Let me think. Well, I'll, maybe it'll come to me. I'll go back to it. This one is um, an image that I find fascinating that I chose the colors that I did in this because um, it's the Scudic Peninsula uh, sunset, and it was of, um, let's see, it would have been October the 12th, 22. And um, I just really felt like one day as I was walking to get dinner at night, and I was looking through the tall cedar trees, there was the most uh, beautiful coral sunset that night I have ever enjoyed in my life. So all the rest of the days, I kept waiting for it to reappear. And it never did. So I went out and painted this image and added my own colors 
from what I remembered from the other evening's walk. And I think it really is marvelous. It's a bit of how it came about, that's for sure. And um, it was, um, after, this was my last painting. I painted there too. And so it was really a creative, um, very creative. I made it up. <laughs> but I had actually seen the colors I'm talking about. The image was in front of me, but the colors weren't. And when I was on my way home in June of last year from New York, uh, from the publisher's invitational uh, that took place. When you saw the Lupins earlier, that was from the publisher's invitational. That's the third event that I'm showing these slides from. I went to the Hudson River Valley because we were in upper state New York and we went down, Mike and I traveled down the Hudson River and we came to the Catskills, to Olana, which is a place where uh, Frederick Church's property um, his barns that he built here and his fabulously elaborate home. His, his paintings are huge like a wall and he was circa 1900. But the purple barn, I had never seen purple barns before. This was just fascinating to me. And then they have green barns and another property called Germantown just south of there, again, on the Hudson River. I'd never seen green barns either. So my green barn is yet to be produced. I haven't done it yet, <laughs> but I will because I just loved it. And so with this one, we're going to be going into 2023. We're getting down to what I just barely brought home. And you folks are the first ones ever to see this image ever. I have not shared it on Facebook before because I've been purposely, other artists who were there um, so have seen the original, but now you are the first one to see the image. And you're also the first to see the painting of the place that I painted it from, the object I painted and the painting. And it is all totally 100% palette knife. So I truly enjoyed um, this. I want to tell you, when we came there, um, the word was it had been a cold, wet, rainy, cloudy summer. And the locals were very distraught because it's mainly beautiful there. When the artist arrived, we had 70 to 79 degree sunny week for a week. <laughs> and when we left, the rains returned, cold, rainy, cloudy weather as we drove out. I kid you not. And so on Thursday night, the artists from um, all over the country, we had 100 artists from Canada and USA. Um, New York's very close to Canada, so we have a lot of Canadian artists that come. We gathered together and had a gathering of prayer to God for the glory of that beautiful week and how he had blessed us with his beautiful creation. And I just have to say that it certainly did speak to me. I hope it speaks to you and that you enjoy this image. Beautiful. And there it is, closer. I apologize for the glare. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah, if I have to say so myself. <laughs> Very nice. Now, a few days earlier, we were invited to this farm. It's called Asgard Farm. Those of you who have uh, gone back in some Rockwell Kent's uh, dairy farm, he was an artist also in the um, New York region, but he was later, uh, he, he was alive in a later time than the Hudson River Valley artist. Anyway, he built this entire uh, farm and I'm sitting down the road quite a ways down this road and uh, to my right is actually his studio that's still there and you're welcome to go visit if anyone ever does get to this farm it's a fabulous place to go and in this one I was wanting to show you my techniques and when I mentioned I used red oxide um, it's a transparent watercolor I use a tiny little bit of gamsaw on the when I'm outside only, not in the studio, but I paint my values in, in a monochromatic way. 
you can just begin to see where I was putting on the values with my palette knife. So the gray is the first painting, first part of the paint that I have did as the blue was the mountain of the other one that I showed you not long ago. And there I am adding details with um, a tiny detail brush. But you can see I wear gloves to keep myself from getting the um, paints and the chemicals on me because you see how dirty they are. I am a mess. I just get it everywhere. <laughs> and the other thing is that I am steadying myself with my other hand. So I've, I'm 75 and I have um, not the steady hand I had. Uh, say back in the turn of uh, 19 to 2014, I probably had a steadier hand. But uh, so I have to use all kinds of techniques and I have all kinds of tools that I use. Here is a picture of my um, palette knives. I sit down, like I told you, and I spread out this uh, palette in front of me and fill in here with my colors that I'm going to scoop up with my palette knife. And I generally scoop up, let's say I use this palette knife, the third one uh, as you're counting, and I would scoop up two values or more at a time to paint it in. That's the way um, I generally paint. And I uh, check the values as I'm going uh, to see it, that it matches what I already painted underneath. So there is the finished painting. Uh, you can't see the barns anymore, but you saw them earlier. So this is what they, what it looks like to me and the mountains that were behind them and the trees. Very nice. Beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you. And so um, I don't know if you can find your pink church. We're just about to come to our end of our discussion today and ask for questions if there is any. Can you find it? I'll I'll stop my sharing. <clears throat> Look, I see smiling faces. That's really wonderful. <laughs> I will. The pink church. So, Kim, can you find the pink? Oh, you're looking. Yep. Okay, let me. Yes, I will. Okay. Let's see here. It should be coming up here. It's coming. I have to thank you, Kim, because now I feel really proficient at doing Zoom. You know, little uh, young children and teenagers, they just have it over us folks who have gone over 60 years old. <laughs> so thank you. So we have the pink church that's up here. When um, you saw the lupins that I painted earlier, Kim showed it to you and I showed it to you again. I got a telephone uh, call or actually it was a text. Would I call my gallery that had uh, my work in um, Chesterfield? <clears throat> uh, one of my friends watching this today has been helping me in the past hang up and take down my exhibits at Chesterfield. So she'll enjoy this. I got a telephone call from that gallery and um, one of their patrons loved my work and they said, would you paint a, would you consider painting a commission for a birthday present for his wife? And um, I said, oh, that sounds really exciting. I've done this many times. This is not the first time that I've been involved with a surprise. So this was a surprise painting. And I would say it was about 36 by 24 inches. Um, and so you can visualize the size. He um, in, invited his wife to come visit my home uh, studio. And when she walked in, he directed her toward the easel where this painting was. Both of them were born and raised in South Africa. So this is called the Pink Church in South Africa. And um, they were both um, sent to um, schools away and they came back home. And this is the first thing they saw when they were coming back home. So the story was, as anyone who is coming back home feels a love for an image, and it is an actual church that it's a tiny little thing, you know, that people go to, they walk to it here. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but anyway, there are the four black 
darker uh, images, just giving the hint of people walking to the church. But anyway, um, she was so surprised. She had tears in her eyes. And I think that has to do with how I hope my artwork touches everyone deeply. And it certainly did her. So again, I want to tell you my heart's overflowing. Um, just yesterday, I went to um, Owensville and I was invited to jury or juror the Gasconade County Plan Air Paint Herman Day. And um, it was just so exciting to visit with artists from all across the state, learn new artist names and discuss their inspirations. And my teacher's heart is still going and I don't imagine it will ever stop because I just enjoy bringing out everyone's inner ability to paint. That's what I want you to do. <laughs> and yes, I'm excited in this advancing maturity that is now coming over me. The goal is yet to express my feelings, to think about what I see and to tell that story. It's as simple as that, and it continues to be a tantalizing challenge to me, and I hope it is to you too. I've enjoyed this so much. I was nervous before it started, but it, as soon as I saw my friends, I was totally relaxed. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Catherine, you've done a fantastic job, and you have had such an incredible career as an artist, and uh, I appreciate you sharing that with us today, because uh, what a journey you've had and, and continue to have. I mean, like you said, you were judging the... Uh, plein air contest yesterday in Herman. I saw you last weekend. We showed together oh, at the Brush and Pollock show. I mean, you're you are getting out there and yes. doing it. I mean, uh 75 is just a number. I mean, because uh it is not slowing you <laughs> a bit. <laughs> not a bit. So um uh, we if anybody has any questions for Catherine, please feel free to unmute yourself. Um yes. we'll be happy to to share with you. And I've put in the chat. Uh, her contact information, where you can follow her on Facebook and on her website, Colorful Brushes. So uh, does anybody have any questions? You're pretty thorough. You're pretty thorough. I I appreciate that. And, and, and I will post that, we, <laughs> you know, when the, when the video is up on YouTube and stuff. So people might chime in with some questions on Facebook for you and everything. Uh, what's your next adventure that you're that you're going to do? Uh, well, I've already signed up for the fall color week. Next year is going to be instead of on the east coast, it's going to be on the west coast. We're going to paint oceans and uh, the other other side. And I happened to go there this summer as well with a family trip, and I can say say that the um, geographic forms on the west coast is so much different with the ocean as compared to the east coast and if you've had that um well lovely adventure yourself you will agree with me but um that's where i'm going so my challenge will be can i do that ocean out there we'll see <laughs> which uh which can't wait to be back with my friends are you going to california Yes, California. Good. And I guess I could mention too that um, if any artist or anyone else wants to uh, try it themselves, we had lots of beginners. I mean, lots of beginners this year. And uh, there's nothing better than to immerse yourself in a non-competitive event to learn from someone who's painting around you. And everybody wants to help everyone else and they do. I mean, you just ask and you've got oh, more help than you need, <laughs> but it's a delight. Uh, one of my dear friends who lives down the Missouri River um, was also there uh, for these events that I've participated with in the last um, two years. And she and I, we don't paint in the same exact location, but we're within shouting distance of each other. So we're not alone, you know, when we're out there at all. And then Mike is running around taking pictures of all the artists and they enjoy having uh, him take their photograph. Kim, you're a photographer, you know that. Um, 
when you're immersed in your own creativity, you cannot yeah. take the pictures, pictures, and he, he just gives them to them for their use, however they want to. Mm -hmm. Great. That's great. I see uh, some of my friends that have actually, I've uh, uh, gone, gone with to uh, paint in local. <laughs> Well, we, we appreciate that he does that and uh, your generosity today, sharing your story and your time. And uh, um, I want to thank everybody for being with us today. And Catherine, continued success to you and uh, much appreciation for uh, uh, you putting this on and for Best of Missouri Hands. Uh, you've been a longtime member and we appreciate your support and want to wish everybody a fantastic day and uh, um, we will see you down the road. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Terry. <laughs> Bye, Annie. All right.